welcome to the reality revolution today we are going to read a very interesting current channeling from quo this one delivered on july 23rd 2023 some really amazing questions were answered this was the Prague gathering and they even ask about the state of the harvest and the progress of humanity over the past 40 years quo is an assemblage of highly evolved advanced alien civilizations that speak through a principle called quo that include Hatan, Latui, and Ra in fourth, fifth, and sixth density. They generally answer questions from a group called LL Research, and I have learned an incredible amount just from reading these lectures and then thinking upon them and letting these words soak into my life. We begin with this channeling, the topics being dealing with indecisiveness, stagnation, and lack of inspiration, struggling with the physical body and extending its life, the effect of spiritual gatherings on the seeker, the current state of harvest, and the progress of humanity over the past 40 years. Austin Channeling we are Quo, and we greet each in this circle of seeking in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We are joyed and honored to be invited to join you in this sacred gathering of seekers. We have observed this gathering for the light generated from this meeting is quite apparent from our perspective in the metaphysical realms. Your gathering and seeking together with open hearts and open minds generates a power that resonates with the creation and resounds to all beings who are seeking in the love and in the light of the Creator. Before we begin and take questions from this group, we would share that we sense within this group a curiosity as to the presence of the one known to you as Carla. And we are quite happy to report that our dear friend Carla is with us, and she has also been with you during your time together. She is so happy to witness the gathering of hearts, and she joins you within your heart and offers her love and protection to each within this circle, for she feels as though you are her children, and she offers the energy of the mother and the divine feminine to you, and is available for you for communion in your meditations and on your journey upon request. We would also offer our standard disclaimer, you may say our perennial request, that you do not view us as authoritative figures offering definite guidance. Instead, we ask that you view us as fellow travelers upon the path, offering only our own perspective for your consideration. And for any thought or word that you feel may be a detriment to you upon your journey, that you cast it aside without further consideration, for we wish not to be a stumbling block but instead only wish to provide that which might help on your journey into the heart and to the Creator. At this time we ask if there is a query to which we may respond. How can one overcome indecisiveness and stagnation in times when inspiration to act feels limited? We are Quo, and we are aware of the query, my sister. This query is one which we feel may resonate with many seekers within your third density, for you have incarnated into a density in which there is a veil of forgetting that blocks much of your perception of the creation, and so those faculties of inspiration and knowledge of how to proceed upon your path are not apparent. Sometimes, therefore, you may feel that the lack of knowledge and inspiration can create stagnation. This is a very common experience and is indeed an intended built-in experience of your density, for it is not intended that you know which direction to step, which inspiration may guide you upon your path. With this instrument's permission, we will exercise him in a way that he is not accustomed to typically and share a story that might help to illuminate our perspective on this dynamic. There was once a young, adventurous woman who lived in a village in a valley nestled between beautiful mountains. One day a traveler came upon this village and shared with this young adventurer word of a festival occurring upon the other side of the mountain the following day. This was to be a festival of lights, 
and the traveler reported that it was the most beautiful sight that she would ever witness if she were willing to make the journey. She felt determined to take up this challenge, and he showed her the trails that she might take to find her way over the mountain so that she may arrive and witness this festival of lights. But he told her it was a full day's journey, and that she would need to leave early upon daybreak to arrive in time to witness the festival. And so the following day, she rose early with the sun and began her journey, determined to make it across the mountain and see the beautiful festival of lights promised by the traveler. She marched with determination, each step bringing her closer to her destination. She paid little attention to the nature around her, for there was a promised experience that she was determined she would arrive at in time. So she continued down the winding path across rivers, through valleys, until finally as the sun was beginning to lower in the sky and she became fearful that she may not arrive at the destination in time, she came upon a fork in the path. She stopped and said to herself, The traveler did not inform me about which path to take. How should I proceed? She decided that simply making a choice in this moment was better than no choice, and so she chose the path to the left and marched with determination that she would arrive at the Festival of Lights. Not long thereafter, she arrived at another fork and looked around her and realized that this was the same fork in the same path. Well, the result is simple, she said, I must now take the right path. And so she did, and again marched with determination, but again, not long after, she arrived at the same fork in the same path. So she stopped with frustration and looked around her and cried out, Where should I go? What am I to do? It seems that no matter the path I take, I arrive at the same destination. She was deflated and discouraged and began to cry to herself. And as she cried, she felt the wind whisper, but she could not understand it. She heard the tree speak to her and she could not understand, but she saw behind her a sturdy stone and sat in contemplation, wondering what she was to do. For it was too late to return home, darkness was approaching, and she could not know how to arrive at the festival of lights that she so desired to experience. As she sat on the stone, and the sun continued to lower in the sky, the wind continued to whisper to her, and the trees continued to speak. And she began to relax into the moment. And as she looked around, and it grew darker, she noticed a twinkling within the trees. She began to understand the wind and the trees, they spoke to her of this festival of lights. And as she continued to sit and darkness fell, there were more twinkling lights in the trees that danced. She realized there was an entire sky and tree line full of fireflies beginning to offer their light to her. They began to swirl and dance. And she began to notice higher in the sky that as the fireflies danced for her, the stars themselves began to swirl along with them. She sat for hours witnessing this glorious sight, these twirling lights, and it was the most beautiful sight she had ever seen. She was hypnotized by this amazing orchestra offered to her, and without realizing it, the night had passed, and the sun began to rise again. The wind continued to whisper, the trees continued to speak, and even the animals and birds sang. The insects danced for her, and she realized that all along there was a path outside of her perception that was not part of this fork in the road. And as the sun began to arise again, she stood and took this path and was surprised that not soon after she arrived back at her home village. She was then able to share with her friends and family and villagers the glorious sight that she had seen. She realized that indeed she had arrived at the Festival of Lights, but it was not as she expected, that it was present for her at the moment in which she felt lost. My friends, there is no part of the creation no part of your path that is not alive with the infinite love and light and glory of the one infinite creator. The inspiration that you seek to take your next step is within every iota of the creation around you. It may not be apparent, and this is intended for the purpose of your density. Your third density is perceiving this love when it is not apparent, to seek this light when it is not apparent, to find the inspiration within the creation despite the fact that you do not see it in front of you, yet you must have faith that it is present. And if you take stock of this present moment and you relax into your heart, then you may discover that this love is present. Whatever it is that you were supposed to be doing is present 
within this moment, for there is nothing else that could exist for you. There is no destination for you to march to. Determine to arrive there, for your destination is now, the eternal now. We understand that this perspective might seem paradoxical, for even we of the Confederation of Planets in the service of the One Infinite Creator speak to you about a progression your soul takes through the densities home to the Creator. But we might help to resolve this paradox by offering our perspective that though there may seem to be a progression for you upon your journey, this may be better seen as a falling away of expectation, a falling away of a need to arrive somewhere, a need to be somewhere, and instead a growing realization that what you are seeking is present in this very moment without any effort needed. You may simply sit upon the stone and relax and pay attention to that which surrounds you and that glorious festival of lights that was promised by the traveler will reveal itself to you with patience and with faith that you are where you need to be and that you will receive what you need to receive in order for you to continue your journey home to the one infinite creator at this time we would transfer this content to the one known as Trisha. We are Quo, Trisha Channeling. We are those of Quo, and we are now with this instrument. May we ask if there is a query to which we may speak? Question, I currently struggle a lot with my physical body. I would like to stay on this earth as long as possible, but not sure whether my body will sustain me. Can you please give me some advice? We are those of Quo, and we are aware of the query, my brother. We see much fruit to be harvested from this line of inquiry, and we can understand the interest and desire to fully experience this incarnation, this blip, if you will, among your soul's journey, this opportunity to dance in this body at this time. We can empathize with the struggle that the physical vehicle provides the soul, most especially in this realm of existence, within this density, on this planet, at this time. We can appreciate the desire to have a fuller experience to elongate the incarnational journey in this body, and we see it for the purity of the intention behind it, that zest for what you call life, that drive to learn and embody. And we use that word intentionally, for in this particular query, you are asking how to better serve the physical vehicle in an effort to support that desired seeking. As we navigate this query, through the stained glass that is this moment, we would attempt to connect this instrument's own memories and life experiences in hopes of speaking to this question. For this instrument in particular has this incarnational struggle of the body, the feeling that this body will keep the soul on this planet in this experience for a shorter amount of time as you see time. As we scan her experiences, we see the emotions of at times fear, of worry, of anger, of sadness, and we can understand how those emotions bubble up, making themselves known. For in this heavily veiled dance in which you find yourselves, it can be difficult to recognize that the body is ultimately not truly who you are. The body is but a costume, and you will have many costume changes in this play, my friends. Our first inclination is simply to suggest that as stated a bit by the previous instrument, one practice presence that one sees the potency of each passing moment, that there are endless gems and jewels and riches of spiritual nature in every second of your experience as you so evaluate that which you call time. When you are in the practice of presence, the notion of a forecast plays no part. The idea that there is an end is no longer valid, for there was no beginning either. All that matters and all that exists is that moment and we realize again that is a challenging notion to accept as truth and your physical vehicle is ever skilled at reminding you of this veiled experience but again we can only humbly suggest that intentional practicing of being aware aware of what is what truly is that might mean acknowledging what you see as limitations of your body we would offer the alternative perspective that they are gifts. Yes, pain and struggle are uncomfortable, but what a gift of experience that you, as you see yourself, as you identify yourself, are afforded this opportunity so that the Creator may better know itself. What an honor. 
and in recognizing that presence, whatever that may look like, concern about what is next can fall away. Deep appreciation of whatever is in front of you, whatever is within you, can take root. We feel that is perhaps the most potent avenue for navigating this specific line of questioning, this specific line of seeking. Being present with that which you see as your body can also be helpful in terms of learning to love and accept it for what it is. In your sense, it may seem what you call imperfect. It may seem weak. It may seem faulty. Would you put those labels on any other portion of the Creator's creation? Why affix them to yourself? Sit with that love and that acceptance that you have for other aspects of this creation and feel it for yourself. Genuinely hone in on that love. Genuinely accept it and thank it. Have gratitude for it. And perhaps in that love and acceptance, you may find what you call healing. We don't mean necessarily the healing of the body complex in terms of the alleviation of what you see as symptoms or struggles, but instead healing that is much larger, much more cosmic in scale. The heightening vibration of embodiment, the fuller expression of the soul that comes with the forgiveness, that comes with the welcoming, gentle touch that one truly deserves for oneself. That, my friends, is perhaps some of the most potent medicine one can have. Not just for yourself, not just for the body, not just for mind or soul, but for other self, for planets, for universal love, for universal experience, for the Creator. My friends, each passing moment of this veiled experience is intentional and perfect. It is ripe with opportunities to learn to love, to grow spiritually, and to move towards that oneness that is ultimately what is true, what is beyond that which you see as yourself and your body. What amazing and truly perfect gifts these bodies are. Love them. Tend to them. Listen to them. Cherish them. Appreciate them. How one may do it, how one may go about practicing, can be of many varied avenues. The nourishing of the body through your foodstuffs, through your rest, through your fulfillment on a spiritual and soul level, the tending to the mental space in terms of loving and accepting yourself, allowing love always to be the set direction on one's compass. Even something as simple as stating out loud an affirmation or statement of I love my body, for my body affords me all that I am gifted in this moment. Of course, you seekers may see that there are infinite opportunities to nourish and care and tend to the body. We would only follow that up by stating that all measures be done with the gentle touch, that if one feels as though one has failed to the body or the self, that one be gentle, have grace for the self, realize that this is a learning experience and recognize that this was an opportunity to simply be an extension of the Creator. Before we close our contact with this particular instrument, we want to communicate that the intention to elongate the life of this physical vehicle is a novel one. We appreciate, again, as we stated earlier, the zest for what you call the life, the desire for experiences. My friends, that is so beautiful, and we also wish to remind you that this is but one of many grains of sand of experience. This life is one of countless others your soul will embark upon and has embarked upon. All that there is is exactly what needs to be there. Whatever happens is exactly what needs to happen. Cherish these moments, love these moments, and fully live these moments as always with full knowledge that we are with you that you are never alone, for you are the Creator. You are everything all at once. How beautiful and perfect this experience truly is. We thank each and every one of you for your energy and your ability to be here with us, and we wish to express that gratitude through this instrument. And at this time, we shall take our leave of this instrument and transfer the contact to the one known as Gary. We are those of Quo, Gary Channeling. We are those known to you as the principle of Quo, and once again we greet this circle of seeking with praise and thanksgiving for the work each has done, not only these past few diurnal cycles, but in the long journey, and as you experience it, 
struggle through this and many incarnations before as you seek ever more firmly to put the truth as you perceive it in the center of the center of your sights that the seeking of the one creator and the path of service to others through unconditional love may become the central pathway and focus of your life with this instrument sufficiently warmed we ask if there is a query from this circle to which we may respond we are those known to you as quo question what effect do gatherings such as this one have on the spiritual seekers path and what impact does it have on our polarization we are those of quo and we have received and appreciate this query we are happy to offer our perspective with a reminder that we are not in body among you experiencing the sensations the energy transfers and the lived impact of the self meeting other selves as you have this weekend we are with you in unseen ways and we genuinely experience a sense of upliftment you may say with each heart that flutters open when you come into contact with one another when you let go of another thread of the hardness or the pretense of the armor that you have erected around your heart so that you may be yourself your true vibration among your brothers and sisters that you may give and receive love more freely though we are densities apart and our experience is quite different than your own love is love our universe your universe is made of love your hearts begin to explore this love through the patterns of the journey the interpersonal dynamics and the inner work and that love is our love as well that love is that which we seek as well and when it is given a space to manifest and be embodied in third density we too light up where the response to love is from our perspective love and our hearts open with yours that was a rather lengthy prelude to say that in terms of the impact upon your journey the experiences such as this gathering are for the seeker to know both in the moment but in particular as you allow the experience to integrate and allow the seeds that were planted during your meetings to blossom to provide fruit as you continue your journey as you strengthen that work that had been done previous to this weekend that you may go forward but we can say that in our observation the impact is a rather positive one upon each who participates in such a gathering the prerequisites are not that a certain place per se or a certain people per se be present but rather the authenticity of the seeking of truth the desire however imperfectly held to open the hearts the need and the inclination to respond with compassion to suffering and the understanding if we may use this word that all is one these sorts of ingredients when they coalesce in the shared purpose of a time period spent together in the same space support each soul immensely as the lived of experience of many in this circle there is perhaps some sense of aloneness in the journey each is blessed with those who love and those who support there is yet a desire for like company to be seen and to see to hide no longer to be the self more honestly and freely thus it is that those of this circle and of circles around the planet journey and sacrifice on various levels to be in such environments where they may have even a momentary taste of that special circumstance special on your particular world that is of what it is like to exist to operate to exchange energy with those other souls whose green ray opens and vibrates and radiates and welcomes and receives you you come together not to find ways to make profit as is the often economic activity of your peoples to build a better bomb to pursue some other particular vanity project instead you come together to share in your seeking of the one creator and you spend time talking about love talking about light many times we have heard these words and concepts and there are many associated qualities from your lips if not expressed vocally then upon your minds and in your hearts in this exploration of those primordial qualities of intelligent infinity of the one creator you are as threads each contributing its own color woven together into a larger more beautiful tapestry a picture shall we say emerges when you share your energy so freely and so lovingly with one another but instead of being dyed yarn you are multifaceted jewels of light reflecting and radiating the creator in uniquely distorted but ever perfect ways your light blends with one another to create a picture 
which you may sense ever so dimly, which we from our vantage point may be honored to see rather clearly, and it is one that sings the praises of the one creator in the joy and in the beauty that are inherent to reality itself. In an environment such as each has created here this weekend, you find a taste of home. That home is a metaphysical one. It is your true estate as a divine spark of the one creator, presently identifying with the body moving through a physical world, through the stages of birth and growth, decline and death, through the suffering and sorrow of this world. But if your world as we perceive it not quite helpful in reminding you of your true estate, instead the collective sinkhole of indifference creates something of a gravity well that draws your attention and captures the identity in a story of the entity as completely separate from all other entities and indeed the universe itself, the entity as a consumer, the entity as a being merely of thoughts and emotions, the entity as perhaps even merely a body wherein your consciousness is some inexplicable epiphenomenon derivative or subsequent to the material body. Your illusion as your peoples have built it does not quite invite you to come home into your true beingness into your place as a child of the one creator, as a brother or a sister of all beings of the universe, which is not to imply that you're in a bad place, so to speak, or a place from which needs escape. The illusion is purposive. It is designed to teach, and this particular illusion in which you find yourselves offers very potent catalyst for the recognition of self by self. But while the faculties of will and faith of the entity may make use of any outer situation any quality of suffering from which they may learn and grow it is exceedingly difficult to go it alone as you may say to be with others similarly seeking and simply to share the self with another is to lighten the load is to find other shoulders to carry that which has weighed you down for so long my friends though we know the joy of the infinite one our hearts do grieve with your own the anguish the confusion the dark places in which you so frequently find yourselves. How we wish we could tap you on the shoulder, so to speak, and invite you to release that dark place and step back once again into your true home, into that place which you never left, that being the light. It is only an illusion. It is only a concept that captures your attention and identity and leads you to the firm belief that you are small, that the world is bigger than you, that there is something to fear intensely, that you are cut off and stranded and alone. This is an illusion. This is real on your terms, valid and tangible, and that which must be worked with, but from the broader perspective, not real, not actual. When we say or speak of your true home, it is not a geographical location that you left in some distant past. Though for those wanderers, there is a movement from the home environment, the home density to this third density planet. We speak instead of, as we have described, the true estate, the birthright, the self as the creator, that self which was never born and shall never die, that self which is here, right now, forever, and always, and does not enter the dream of the illusion of time, for it is ever-present, that home you never left and you can never leave because it is your core identity right now, even though, as you receive these words, you are certain otherwise, even though the pain you feel and carry and are confounded by seems to say otherwise. If such is my true estate, you may ask, then why do I suffer so? We may say this is the puzzle for you. It was not imposed upon you by an external intelligence or force or universe, but it was a puzzle that you put in place for yourself, that it may facilitate that which you sought to learn when you have the key. We cannot describe this exact shape to you of that key, but we can firmly indicate that the key is made with love, with acceptance, with forgiveness. The door does not open without these qualities and their associated qualities entering those places where you have rejected the Creator, rejected or perhaps even demeaned yourself and other self. And it is gathering such as this that empower exactly that work. What a gift you are to one another. Though there are many ways you may be of service to each other in intentional ways by, as we have seen this weekend, sharing your gifts of voice, of song, of tarot reading, of slideshow, these outer gifts are the vehicles through which the primary gift comes, and that is you. You are the gift. You are the truth you seek. 
but if you are a gift then how much more is the other self to you you could have opted not to seek out an experience such as this but it called you certainly you came to study to learn to gain information but was it information that most spoke to your heart or was it the presence of other selves did you wish to be in company did you wish for togetherness do you love others do you need others my friends each of you is in an irreducible way in the illusory spectrum of progression and individual when you come together for purposes such as this weekend you become a group it of course does not erase the individual identity but it does create that which you wish to participate in a larger intelligence and an amplified environment of love and light and before we transfer this contact to speak to the second portion of the query regarding your polarization and consciousness again only you can determine what fruit what gift such an experience as this has offered to you but we can say in terms of the opportunity that it does indeed offer you an accelerated we correct this instrument does indeed offer you the opportunity to accelerate your journey or polarizing your consciousness in service to others for that is what this environment is one inherently of service to others again not because you're offering a particular service but because you are showing up authentically even though as is likely inevitable you will be mirrored to in terms of those pretenses and guards around your being that you carry with you and the default operation of the mind as you experience in your daily life may be present still a truer version of shall we say your beingness is given freedom and space and permission to express itself and in turn the same is given to the other self in this environment you may see yourself more clearly and that seeing polarizes your consciousness more strongly you may be reminded of who it is you are and what it is you are here to do upon this planet you may find hope when all seems to go awry with the world as you read your headlines that there are compassionate gentle beings in this world operating below the radar lightening the planetary vibration with you at this critical juncture upon your planet and you may feel a sense as has been described by the circle of recharging your spiritual batteries so that you may go home into that journey that you set for yourself with renewed strength with perhaps clarified vision that you may recommit yourself to your path in the exercise of your will and faith we thank you so much our brothers and sisters we are one in this long journey forever and always we keep each of you and all those upon your world in our hearts and we would reiterate that we are available to you to lend love and light and energetic support to your meditations and to you seeking as we always await the request at this time we transfer our contact to the one known as austin we are those known to you as the principle of quo austin channeling we are quo and we are again with this instrument we find that this instrument and this contact has the capacity for one more question and a brief response question raw mentioned at some point that harvest on planet earth would be comparatively small it's been roughly 40 years since this statement has been made and a gradual awakening seems to be flowing through our peoples now could you please comment on the spiritual progress humanity has made in the past 40 years with regards to embracing and applying universal love to ourselves to our fellow other selves and to planet earth we are quo we are aware of the query my sister and we thank this circle for posing this query for one of the core desires in our interaction with your planet is an attempt to aid those in achieving harvest and we believe that many of those present here recognize within their own hearts that they came here on a similar mission in order to aid those upon this planet and to achieve a greater harvest for this is as we see it a great gift to the creator that entities are harvested and are able to accept more and more of the creator's love and light and step forward into the next density indeed the span of time that you count as 40 years in terms of your lifetimes is quite long but in terms of the cycles of harvest it is quite quite small however in our perception there has been a great progression within this time span and we believe that it is apparent to all upon your planet the changes and the transformations and the differences that have come to you in this time period from a surface level it may seem that things have gotten more chaotic 
in a quick glance at the circumstances of your planet might give many means to worry, a reason to be concerned for the fate of your planet and those upon it. But we share a perception with the questioner and that there is an undercurrent that has also been quite present within this time span that has continued to grow. This undercurrent is related to the flowing vibrations of fourth density upon your planet. Your planet at this time exists in the time space of green ray. And the longer that your planet dwells within this environment, at the same time as your space-time environment remains hindered by the consciousness of your peoples, the stronger the influence of the fourth density and its attempt to find its way into the hearts of your peoples comes. And we find at this time that there are a great many people upon your planet whose hearts are closed. Yet the strength of the light is pushing and begging and pleading with greater and greater strength for these hearts to open and the potential for all upon your planet to recognize the nature of love that exists within the vibration of fourth density and can be born through your heart upon your planet is quite vast. It may not be truly realized by many upon your planet, but there is potential for this. What may be termed awakening and a shift within your cultures to a perspective that view self and other self as the same and even your planet as part of the self and the society upon it. This perspective is within grasp. If only these entities reach out and seek it. At this time you may witness that the catalyst that you experience as a global society continues to influence you in a way that you must all every single one upon your planet grapple with. The catalyst has shifted from more of a personal catered individual catalyst though that is still very present to a greater global catalyst so that you are challenged as a population to come together to realize that you have the capability and the potential to manifest a true experience of love worldwide globally and in this manifestation you would join the rest of the creation in the love and the light of the one creator my friends as you depart from this gathering we encourage you to remember that the light that you have experienced here and the love that you have shared is always available and if you may anchor and hold on to this through your daily round of activities through your interactions with each other self that you encounter you bring this potential closer and closer to reality we view the potentials of harvest upon your planet as fluctuating but we assure you and remind you that there is a possibility that all upon your planet may open their hearts and together you may join hands and continue forth upon your journey home to the one infinite creator we are with you in this journey we are honored to join you as we all together continue towards the creator at this time we take our leave of this circle and leave you as we found you in the love and in the light and the glory and the peace of the one infinite creator adonai my friends adonai vasu boragas it is always wonderful to read the more recent channelings because it really does feel like they're talking about what is happening in the world right now and i continually have this question what the state of our harvest is at i look out on the world and i see wars i see conflicts i see all this separation quo is telling us that we can come together as a planet and we can find love and they reiterate something I've said repeatedly in several episodes beyond just the law of one. We are existing now in a different environment than what we have previously. Starting in 2012, we entered into a space that is made up of green ray, fourth density light photons. And what that means is that the very particles of light that we are coexisting within, that are all around us, carry a greater density of information this opens up an entirely different level of consciousness but it's a very gradual process as they explain here so every day this fourth density of light is influencing our environment it might lead to a greater catalyst you have a greater knowledge of something that somebody else is saying you can read their mind you can read into what they're saying there's greater conflicts that occur with this light when your heart is not opened this entire channeling is a call for all of us to begin to open our heart to this green ray energy and it's not open now most of us as they say 
have our hearts very much closed I meet people all the time clearly their hearts are closed if you're in a certain business they even teach you to keep your heart closed it could be the military or the school that you're attending but they all play a part in closing your heart when you open your heart it can be scary you may access and become aware of feelings that are very disturbing concepts and ideas which are incredibly frustrating but if we go through this process we have access to this higher density photon and we can use it we can use it to heal all things become possible in much more magnified ways when you're dealing with these light photon particles because that is what fourth density is we are entering into a new field of energy that is particularly designed around our hearts and the green ray energy and if we can open ourselves up to it amazing things always end up happening some other interesting questions here are the discussion of the eternal now that everything that we need in terms of healing or expressions of what we want to do or place on this path and in this particular challenging how to physically heal our body is in the moment they asked what we can do to heal the physical vehicle and to live a longer life and their question was answered by Quo saying it's all about the present moment all is available to you and so I believe they're saying that healing is available to you as well if you start to understand that manifestation only occurs in the present moment you're imagining something in the present moment and that is how you're able to manifest everything that you want to do comes from this eternal present moment now that's where all the power is at and you can access that with an understanding of it in consciousness you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution